Bonsoir and welcome here below the pyramid of the Louvre in Paris and we are here today at a special presentation of Citroen DS or well not Citroen anymore it's just called DS now because they want to establish it as a single premium brand and we've shown you the DS5 and the DS4 in our full reviews already they are also linked in the video description and you might ask yourself well which one is missing with this batch changing in the front obviously the DS3 and we're going to check out that one here tonight and there will also be a sporty version of the DS3 and the normal coupe and the convertible version or the so-called convertible we check out the car what are the changes then and also above the batch change process change and of course we try to get some nice interviews with DS representatives and um, well not only ask very common question but also uncommon one that will be very exciting let's check out the presentation first We can still count on 60 years of legacy, the legacy of the 1955 DS, a technological car, one that was avant-garde, a mythical car. emotion and love for the DS3 was immediately very strong in the public. It's the car that continues to be the preferred city car by the French. If we look at the mythical elements of the car, first of all, you have the floating roof on the DS3. This is something which is very strong. We introduce the new front identity of the DS family. We have some 78 combinations possible between the roof and a bodied color. And there it is now, the new DS3. And well, it is not a completely new car. The car has been there before, just on the name Citroën DS3. And the major change is really the new front. You can see that in the side profile, it rather remained the same. This is here the normal hatch version, three doors. It has also a convertible version where you can have this sliding roof on the top. And there will also be a new sports version, going to talk about that later on. You can see it here now in the new front, the so-called DS wings. That's the stuff, you know, that the headlights are combined with the frame, with the, with the front grille. And um, do you see what are the wings? Just tell me in the comments. And, and because if, when I looked at it the first time, I didn't really see it, but I think I can see it now. What is also remarkable is that this form, this hexagonal form of the front grille, a lot of manufacturers are using that one now. For example, also Audi or we've seen in the Genesis cars of Hyundai now. And it seems to be a very remarkable design form at the moment, which is very contemporary, definitely. The new front grille has been enlarged, definitely. It has a stronger stance on the road, definitely, the whole front of the car. And then the Citroen badge is gone and the DS badge, the big DS badge, that one is placed just above the number plate now. Of course, it would look even better if there should, wouldn't be a number plate, but um, I mean, most of the European countries, you do have those number plates and you cannot really get rid of it. So the front is really the biggest change then. Some more changes we'll see on the interior, new infotainment system, there will be this um, Apple CarPlay integration for example and um, some less of the buttons are used because we got a new infotainment system. That's the most thing about the interiors and then you can pick some other trims and colors on the interior and on the exterior as well. Those are the main changes we have here. The sports version by the way will have 208 horsepower. So for such a relatively small car, already quite some performance to expect in this case. Thank you. 
now let's take a look into the interior and by the way if you see some cable running around here a lot of frequencies today so to secure good sound for you so let's get inside this one is the optional full genuine leather equipment i'll ask the ceo about that one later because i think it's not avant-garde to offer real animal skin if they want to be something different but in the standard version you can get cloth seats here that is also perfectly fine for the ds you see we have a remarkable interior and you know we are not in this high class top premium segment where you pay a lot of money but you already get nice features like a flattened end steering wheel a different steering wheel perforated sides and also some nice surface materials for example here you don't have just plain plastics you know but this glossy style here in the brown that will be fitting to the color of the seats you can also see it at the inside of the doors that they really pay attention to detail for example and you can also do this one for example from faux leather with contra stitches as well so it is really nice that they bring premium to such a segment and um, by the way about the style of the leather seats that one i do appreciate but i mean you can just create it with another service this one is here is inspired by bracelets this kind of pet design let's call it that way and um, i can also take a seat and see how comfortable the car really is and um you know i've div driven different citroen cars and also all of the ds cars and so i can also compare it and the seats as I have the first impression, they're really kind of similar, like the one, maybe I turn them off the music here, if I know where, then you can understand me better. Everywhere music, outside, inside, I think it's here or here, should be, yeah, there it is. It's good that you let me know when you have driven some other cars, you know where to turn off the music, because there's no central knob anymore i can see for that so you just do it at the steering wheel here and that is also one of the main changes here as i said earlier you feel more like sitting in the ds4 probably also um yeah it's a little bit smaller you see um as i'm tall my knees don't have so much space here definitely um so you shouldn't be too tall for that car small car segment here you see we have a new infotainment system in the middle part here and that one reduces the number of buttons but as i've just been searching it i would like to have some central volume knob that would be actually pretty cool um, the rest of the infotainment system well the most important part is that we'll have the smartphone integration and um, you see everything is ordered by touch here Let's see just a button for the ac well separate climate unit in the middle part that one here stays as separate limit also how strong the vents should be but everything else will be done with this central screen and um, well what i'm quite of missing is um well a home button right here but obviously you have it you have the home button the menu button down down there here below there and uh, maybe we can change per plastic that you can see that better there it is we have the lower part where we have a menu button and then you can go back to the home screen i think it's not the best setup because the menu button is below there and up there we have the screen where we have the effect when i'm pressing the menu button and um, i'm not quite sure why they did it that way Let's take a look at the infotainment system because that one is the one with the biggest changes here well it's a pre-production car so it can be switching up again let's see what is working this is the gps we can also see where we are right here and um, well, it's a common setup we know from citroen by the way special effects here when i'm pressing the button that is nice we haven't seen that one before here kind of purple effect that one is really interesting you see you what else do we have here um yeah it's always popping back because it's probably not the final car service connect let's see if something in there it is well with the mirror link and the apple carplay if i would have a smartphone now then i could connect it so that one is definitely new what else is interesting for example the surface of the dashboard you can see even without using real leather you can create some interesting surfaces and they have definitely done a good job with the dashboard here you see the structure here very interesting definitely so this is the first overview of the style of the car and um, i think they have a good approach here not too much changes well most of them are analog it's just some digital instruments right at the 
the right part here. So just the right part is digital, middle one and left one for speed and RPM still and lock style. One funny thing is always getting in the back because you have to change it right here. You can put the seat in the front and then you can get in the back and let's see if there's any space for me left there. And you know, I'm one meters 90 almost in height. Well, that does actually work. Does exactly work with my head, really interesting. And you see the seat is also sliding back automatically, but then not automatically that one comes up. So I have to do it manually here and then uh, <laughs> so the driver in the front has to do it obviously not the easiest system here as well let's see if we can do it like that no that doesn't work I have to do it like that but I, I can't do that with my right hand right now so basically it is for example said that the convertible version is the only five-seater convertible in this segment here four people maybe but fifth well official is allowed but fifth fifth adult here in the middle part hmm, that could be a little bit tricky but then again this car is not mainly for you know very practical purposes it's more for the design approach inside and outside and then you might think okay I just leave some of the space because then you can also um, you know just go for the normal Citroen version if you want you know pay less money and want more space of it so it does offer three spaces in the rear, but not with the most space, definitely. And one short look at the trunk, see it here. It's not quite huge and, well, we've had the DS3 convertible in the pre facelift version before. There, you know, hardly if any trunk because uh, in the convertible it's a really strange system. I can show you it some other time. Here you still have um, some space left and you can also flip the seats you can see it right here it's a one third two third split and then you can also have even more space in trunk if you flip them completely so i mean for a small car this does actually work so you know not too much reduction in the space here right here behind and what i'm also quite looking for you can see it here in detail now the new contrast colors of the roof this is also quite famous we've seen it with a suzuki vitara for example as well this one here now a brown contrast color and so you can have so many different colors and now we'll start our interview session first with Arno Rebo he's head of sales and marketing at the DS and of course talking about sales well you obviously don't want to reveal any sales figures so far now what you really your plans in the future um, you got an interesting point because um, you said you don't want to go on the volume so what's your plan then so our priority is to go on the quality, customer experience, uh, development of the brand, rather to run only for the volume. That's very clear in our strategy. Of course, we have some volumes. We have sold last year uh, more than 100,000 cars in the world. So it's important to continue to develop the brand DS, but this brand will not be driven by volume only because we are building a premium brand. As for the importance um, for the whole Citroen brand or for the whole PSA corporation, how significant will the DS brand will be in the future? Is it just kind of a niche market or do you want to build like, for example, like an Audi in a Volkswagen corporation? So what are your aims for that? I think the, the aim of PSA Group is clear. PSA Group uh, has decided to create its third brand and this third brand DS is the premium brand of the group. So the mission of the premium brand of the group is to bring profitability, to bring new customers, which are different from Citroën and Peugeot, and to develop technology, know-how, craftsmanship, the best of PSA Group can do. So I think it's a little bit comparable to what you said before. I see, I see. Um, some of our viewers, they told me, okay, when I was reading DS4 and DS5, yeah, what, what about reliability of the French cars? Um, so there's also, you know, a core behind all the premium stuff, below, below the surface. So how can the DS brand also bring, let's say, other more core elements also maybe for other Citroën cars then? I think um, where DS uh, make its big difference and uh, position different as uh, uh, other brand of the group 
is in terms of, I will give you an example, choice of materials. For example, uh, uh, we go for high-end materials. We go as well for investing a part of our development in a, a, a soundproof uh, for the cars, suspension, which is, I think, some key, uh, just as an example, of premium market and quality of cars. So, uh, yes, we have to believe that a French uh, car automotive brand uh, can be premium, even, I would say, can be luxury with the level of quality behind and that's uh, our commitment toward our customers. So you think that also the Citroën brand will profit from the investment that DS is taking? I think all PSA Group of course will benefit from uh, this uh, big investment we are doing in developing a premium brand. Talking about the worldwide sales and also the model strategy, we've seen other models in China distributed right now than in Europe. And what about the US? So what's the worldwide strategy for the future? How many models will you have and where do you want to distribute them? So there are three main premium markets in the world. United States, China. China will soon be probably bigger than the United States. And Europe, which is very big as well. Uh, the priority for the brand are clear is Europe and China. We develop as well as uh, uh, we have seen tonight uh, uh, South America, Africa, uh, Middle East, but the priority are Europe and China. And uh, we are not in uh, North America and it's not in our plan today. Okay, and um, China, you have a different dealer strategy there. So they have single DS dealerships. And exactly. is that also a perspective for European market? Or is it like you have so well integrated Peugeot and Citroën brands that you will always connect them somehow? In China, in 2012, when we launched the brand DS, we had the opportunity to create a new dealer network because of joint venture uh, opportunities. So uh, we go for uh, creating DS network because our factory was producing only DS cars. So we are the premium factory and we have a, a dealer network, only a premium dedicated to DS. We have seen the experience is amazing and uh, ex extremely successful. Based on this experience, plus the DS line experience we had in Europe, we created to, the, to, the, to create, the, we decided, sorry, to create the brand worldwide. So we go for a, a dedicated a DS dealer network. We have started with DS stores, with DS salon within our Citroën uh, dealership, but they are dedicated to this. And we already have some uh, in Germany. For example, I was in Köln recently. Yes, uh, we've, we've, I think DS we've, we've seen us in yeah, yes. we've that as well. So, but if I want to do just a DS store right now in Germany, could I do that? Yes, of course, you can apply uh, to, uh, to uh, do a DS store and uh, we have a team there to uh, answer to you and uh, to study uh, eventually uh, your uh, candidature if you want to apply for a DS store. Okay, I'll think about it. Thank you very much. Merci. Thank you. Thank you, Now we're here with Thierry Metros. He is the head of design, exterior and interior both. And well, what I really want to hear from you, first of all, what is French design to you? What is French design? The French design spirit is uh, it's made with, uh, it's a mix between uh, a strong sense of avant-garde and mixed with heritage. And for example, with the DS brand, uh, we always play with these two aspects. We are very advanced, we are looking for advanced design, but we never forget our DNA. Uh, the DNA of the original DS, uh, on the heritage of the French savoir-faire or the French uh, uh, luxury. Okay, and this is typically, uh, if I have to define what is French design, is this um, um, assembly or this uh, mix between avant-garde, strong sense of avant-garde, and on another hand, strong sense of heritage and history. Talking about heritage, as the original DS was uh, shown in 1955, it was said that this car is not from tomorrow, but at this time, from this day, every other car is from yesterday. So it was really groundbreaking at mm -hmm. that time. Yeah, it was. Is such a thing even possible today, you know, with all the regulations and have and restrictions in Zion? So can you do something like this again? I think it's impossible. To, to do again uh, uh, so uh, so strong and innovative design than the original DS, it's impossible now. Uh, it's a shame, huh? but it, it's impossible due to the to the regulation and to, due to the global uh, market. 
uh, because we have a lot of competitors now and it's very difficult to, to do a strong, um, unique car uh, um, to find customers everywhere in the world. Uh, and, but the main, the main difficulty is, of course, the regulation. So that is really a strong restriction also for you designers. So what can you do to differentiate the brand also if you think about other premium brands then? Yeah. Uh, to create the strong differenti differentiation, we have two aspects. The first is uh, the design aspect. Uh, and the key point, in fact, is to have a creative, a very strong uh, and creative design team. Okay, and to have a very uh, uh, courageous, okay, courageous um, uh, people on the product planning, marketing, on, on the top of the of the, of the head of the of the brand. Yeah. Oh, very creative designers and courageous management, of course. <laughs> it's a key. Uh, it's a key point to make to make the, the differentiation. And the third point is to have good uh, engineers. And creative engineers to to have uh, to develop a new technical solution in order to have innovative design. Uh, because if you want an innovative design, you need innovative uh, engineering or uh, technical uh, solution. Because both are, are stronger linked. Yeah, we have um, had some experience before where also designers and engineers were talking. There's always a little tension because designers say, ah, let's do that. And the engineer says, ah, but we can't do it because of this and that. And um, I guess uh, <laughs> from your reaction, something like this is also happening in your place. Um, but when we see a very an all new DS model now, what can we expect? Will it follow the current line or is it something even even different than we see now so what's your impact on the future model lineup we are looking to to, to be um, even more creative and even more uh, avant-garde huh? and you will see the next generation the future generation of ds they will be really very very uh, innovative uh, uh, in interior design exterior design on color and trim uh, it's, it's very important uh, for the DS brand to be uh, avant-garde, not only, for example, the exterior design, but to be innovative on all the, the, the components of, uh, of a car, interior, exterior, and color entry. Is there maybe um, like one special hint we can already tell, you, tell um, our viewers right now, something that you know, will be coming up from the car, something that you say you, you personally look forward to? A, a key point for this is to um, to be connected to the French uh, luxury savoir-faire, okay? And we exchange. We have a lot of uh, of collaboration and discussion uh, with a very uh, famous French luxury brand, uh, and, and it's very uh, important to. And we would like to introduce this um, savoir-faire coming from outside the automotive industry in the automotive industry. And I will give you an example. We are uh, discussing uh, six or seven uh, months ago uh, with a French uh, startup because they developed a new technology to, um, to introduce a stone, real stone, uh, in the interior of cars. They have the technology and we keep this technology. We work together uh, how we can introduce this innovative material inside the car. It's just an example about our philosophy. It's to be open to, to outside, outside the automotive industry, to have fresh and new ID. It's very important for this. That sounds really interesting, especially with the stone. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. For the interview. Okay. Bonne soirée. <laughs> and now we're here with the head of DS, Yves Bonfort. Welcome here. And thank very you. Very nice for... to meet you. Yes. And um, well, we want to talk about the past what's happening right now and of course about the future and I've recently seen a documentary on La Tour Eiffel on the Eiffel Tower and um, there was just a very interesting remark and it was said blah 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 uh, and at that time um, about every second every third premium car in the world was produced in France so there was a glamorous time in the past and uh, maybe you want to connect to that time. With DS, uh, we want to uh, establish a, a French uh, premium brand. DS is about uh, technology, refinement, and uh, French luxury savoir-faire. 
uh, the ambition we have with the brand is to embody in the automotive car industry the know-how of the French luxury industry, uh, which is uh, uh, successful and uh, admired everywhere in the world. And how do you want to do that? You know, uh, a car uh, is uh, an object uh, which is extremely uh, emotional. And uh, uh, we strongly believe that uh, by replicating uh, the savoir-faire, the, uh, the material, the noble materials uh, in the car, uh, implementing them uh, with uh, handwork, uh, with noble work, uh, is uh, the way uh, to achieve that uh, when you combine it with uh, uh, modern uh, and uh, great uh, techno automotive technology. Talking about the materials, we have that in a discussion quite often lately, and especially about genuine leather. And you maybe heard it like what Elon Musk is doing with the new Tesla Model X, as he's giving out a totally vegan model. And we have had a lot of the discussion that people tend to criticize also genuine leather because it's obviously involved with harming animals. And you say you want to be avant garde, something different than the others. So I wonder. Why aren't you offering other material choices also as for the service? Because Genium Leather is obviously not avant-garde, it is old luxury. Don't you want to be defining new luxury? You know, we uh, do a number of uh, uh, things to bring new material uh, to the car as well. Uh, we have uh, recently shown a concept car with stone uh, being used uh, uh, inside the car and uh, our teams are constant, constantly working uh, in order to innovate uh, with material. What is very important is this notion of uh, uh, human uh, touched. We want uh, the material to be implemented in the car by uh, people who have this savoir-faire, this expertise of working out noble materials. But that could also be done without genuine leather. You can have all sorts of material. What is important, again, is the way you implement, uh, you implement them. And the example, uh, the example with stone uh, I was putting forward, I think is very innovative. I think we are the only brand at the moment to have presented stone uh, inside the car. So you also want to focus on totally new materials in the future to present something else? You know, with uh, DS, we want to be innovative in terms of material, we want to be innovative in terms of technology. Uh, you probably have seen that uh, uh, we have decided to enroll the brand in the uh, Formula E uh, championship because we believe this is a different way uh, of practicing uh, car uh, driving pleasure. Uh, we believe it is a way that is uh, uh, responsible for the planet, responsible for future generation. Uh, it is also a way for us uh, to go and meet our customers because the uh, Formula E uh, racing happen in the center of cities and that's where our customers uh, are. So you see, uh, in all fields, uh, we want always to uh, push uh, and go forward. Is that electric approach also something for your normal model lineup? Will we see a fully electric DS model? Electric uh, is something uh, very important. Uh, we will be uh, the first brand in the group to launch uh, plug-in hybrid uh, technology. Uh, and of course, uh, you will have uh, DS electric cars uh, in the future. And that brings us also to the Chinese market, especially. At the moment, we have it kind of split with the model lineup a little bit. How will the future lineup will be? And will we, for example, also see SUV here over in Europe? And um, how many models do you want to offer in total? And will they differ also from market to market? Our customers uh, tend to be uh, global customers. Uh, they are traveling a lot, uh, traveling between region, um, between cities. And so we want to position the brand as a global brand because our customers expect uh, that DS uh, be global. And that's uh, the way we have created the brand. So we will have in the future a global uh, product lineup. Uh, this product lineup will be composed of uh, six cars. Uh, currently, we have three cars in Europe, three cars in China. Uh, the DS5 is common between the two regions, but the, the other cars are specific. In the future, we will have a global lineup of six cars, offering six cars in Europe, six cars in China, and in other regions of the world, by the way. So, we can await three new cars, at least for us in Europe then, and um, well, only our friends in Northern America. Yeah? They are a little bit unlucky. They won't get the S so far. Maybe? Will they? No plans for North America at the moment. Uh, but DS is a global brand. And so uh, nobody knows what the future is about. Okay, so we'll take that. And we'll see you at the next time at Autogofuel. Thank you.